Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to HemingwayLand.com, your source, quality, affordable land in the state of New Mexico. Very excited this week, guys, because we are not just bringing you one property, two properties, three properties, but rather we're bringing you an entirely new subdivision in this video that I'm going to be discussing today. Uh, this subdivision, of course, is very similar to ones that we have listed in in the past, ones that are intensely popular, ones that we get emails and calls about all the time. The subdivision is up in Taos County, very similar to those other subdivisions, but this is the very first time that we are buying, listing, or selling property out there. If you guys are familiar with Trace Piedras Estates or Carson Estates, you'll be glad to know that this new subdivision is called Ranch de Taos Estates, and it is very, very similar. Uh, pretty much all of the uh, selling points, benefits, drawbacks of those other two subdivisions will apply equally here. So if you're at all familiar with those regions or the videos on the website here and how we've discussed them in the past, most likely a lot of this will be redundant for you. Whatever the case, if you are new, welcome, number one. Number two, I'm going to teach you how to kind of uh, navigate all this information. Basically, the video you're watching right now is going to be posted on every listing page for property that we have in this region from now until the end of time. And uh, I say until the end of time because generally within these areas, even if we're sold out at the time that you're watching this video, it is likely that we'll have another property coming out here within the next month, within the next two months. We tend to uh, buy a lot out here and sell a lot out here. And even after we think we've exhausted all the inventory in the region, we always get somebody calling, trying to sell us property out here. So point being, uh, at the moment that I'm doing this video, I think we're listing roughly about 15 properties in this region. Uh, it's very likely you could come back and look at the uh, look at the master list one day and see 100 properties in this region. All right. With all that said, guys, do want to help you kind of better navigate some of this information. A lot of the listing pages, of course, are going to look almost identical to the naked eye. Uh, fortunately, on each of these pages, guys, we have two links down here. I'm going to cover the second one first. It's really going to help you better learn about this region. If you do not want to listen to me blather on for 20 minutes in this video, and no one would blame you, come down here, click these links, and it'll take you to this page on the website, which is our sort of master information page for this subdivision, for Rancho de Taos. And this master information page includes not only the information that's posted on each of the listing pages, but also this very helpful frequently asked questions section. Now, people, let me say this. This is not a generic FAQ. This is something that has been tailored to the roughly 20, 25, 30 questions that I get all the time, all the time about land in these areas. Okay, I know what you're going to ask, and I've written the answers here, and I would be shocked, shocked if you have a question that is not addressed on this page. So I would encourage you guys, if you're looking at this area seriously, you want to learn more about it, this FAQ is going to be intensely informative, number one. Number two. Down here, we've got some important state and county contact information. If you're thinking about buying land out here because you want to develop it in some way, most likely at some point you're going to have a conversation with the Taos County Planning and Zoning Office, with the New Mexico Environmental Department, if we're talking about septic tanks, with the State Engineer's Office, if we're talking about wells or water rights, okay? So those links, those phone numbers will help you. Additionally, guys, we've got a photo gallery down here, photos from all over this region. Now, I will tell you, this subdivision itself is very small, so there's not a lot of difference between north, east, south, and west within the area. It all basically looks the same. Whatever the case, reviewing the photo gallery here will give you an excellent sense of the properties, the, ter the surroundings, the terrain, so on and so forth. And in case you missed something from the photos, we're going to have a drone video down here to help you with it even more. Whatever the case, this page is very informative. Now, additionally, guys, back here, We've also got a link to a master list of all the properties, and it will bring up this spreadsheet. As I noted at the outset of the video, we've only got a handful of properties out here right now. We may have more over time, and I will make a separate video on the master information page about how best to kind of go through this spreadsheet and, and, and kind of compare and contrast all this information. But it's an excellent way to digest all the information on all the properties currently available without having to click around too much on the website. Most notably, of course, GPS coordinates. Click any one of them. It'll bring the property up on a map. You could compare and contrast location that way. Uh, you can come over here, click the respective reference numbers, and be taken to that specific listing page. And you can purchase the property over here in this column. Okay? Again, more information on that in a separate video. Point being, we've got a lot of information here, guys. So with all that said, let's talk about the region that these are in. Again, these are up in Taos County in the northern part of the state. And this area is called Ranch de Taos Estates. And if you come down here and you click the GPS coordinates on the listing page, as with all of our listing pages, it will take you to the Google Maps. So, first off, guys, as noted, all of these are in Taos. Taos, of course, is up here in the northern part of the state. 
Taos, of course, is one of the major cities within the state of New Mexico. Major towns, I should say. This is just north here of Santa Fe, and this is Taos right here. The properties sit just outside of Taos, just a little bit west, roughly about a 10-minute drive, let's say 15 to be safe, here along the 64 into Taos. And of course, Taos is known as a very progressive, very uh, uh, kind of artsy, very hip town. Additionally, you are not only, if you own land here, very close to Taos itself, but you're also close to the Taos Ski Valley over here. When you're talking about the best skiing in America, you're talking about what? You're talking about Telluride and you're talking about Taos. So owning land out here puts you roughly, you know, a 20-minute drive from some of the best skiing in the country. Should be noted, guys, we not only have the Taos Ski Valley over here, we also have Angel Fire, Angel Fire Resort over here, and a number of other attractions. This is a really beautiful, picturesque part of the state, northern New Mexico. Over here, you've got Eagle Nest Lake State Park, and all this green stuff that you see on the map is, of course, the Carson National Forest. Uh, so, of course, plenty of uh, trails, camping, picnicking, hiking you could do out there, and, of course, hunting. Anything on four legs, you can get a permit to kill it out here in the Carson National Forest. There's a lot to do, a lot to see, a lot to explore, really right within the backyard of these properties. Now, let's zoom in here on the map and talk about this little subdivision. So, it should be noted, guys, that this ranch of Detalus Estates is located just west of the 64 over here. Uh, a couple quick things I want to point out. One is the Rio Grande Gorge Bridge. If you're not familiar with this, Google do a Google image search of it. I promise you've seen it a million times in movies and TV shows. This is a sort of iconic piece of engineering. It's a, it's a famous bridge. Whatever the case, it sits right here. You cross it over the 64, and you come in here off this. It's called, there we go, Sheep Herder Road. Sheep Herder Road takes you into the Rancho de Taos subdivision. One Major thing I just want to point out to you here, guys, is that, uh, you know, this obviously is a very picturesque region. You'll see that as I go through the photo gallery in a bit. But uh, even if it weren't, one of the benefits of this very beautiful region is that this subdivision basically backs up to all this brown land that you see right here. And all of that is government land, U.S. government land, BLM, Bureau of Land Management, whatever department it exactly falls under. Point being, this is land that is not going to be developed anytime soon. They're not building condos out here. They're not building a Walmart or a parking garage. So the point is, if you buy land out here, the views that you're purchasing today will remain untouched, will remain pristine. You will wake up to them now and 50 years from now if you own land in this region. That's one of the benefits, number one. Number two, of course, when you do have all this sort of untouched, pristine government land, it also means that you've got plenty of territory to explore. I don't, you probably can't hunt out here, but of course you could take a dune buggy, you could go, you know, dirt bike riding out here, and you've got, you know, hundreds if not thousands of acres to do that in. Now, one last thing I just want to point out here on the map while we stare at Google Maps is that we've sold a lot of land in Carson Estates. This subdivision, Ranch de Taos, sits here within sort of the heart of Carson Estates. <clears throat> in fact, we kind of made this helpful drawing here because Taos County is very short on useful plat maps. Uh, Carson Estates Unit 1 is right here off of Sheep Herder Road. Unit 4 is up here, Unit 5 is up here, Unit 11 is down here. And in the midst of all this is the Rancho de Taos Estates. Now, I'm fairly certain it was the same developer who came in in the 60s, bought up all this land, and chopped it all up into quarter-acre parcels. Why did they create an entirely different subdivision right here in the middle of the first subdivision? I don't know. I wish I knew the answer to that. If you have some insights into this, leave a comment on the YouTube channel. Because this one baffles me. Whatever the case, we've bought and sold a lot of land out here in Carson Estates. This, these properties, everything we're going to talk about here is basically right in the heart of all that. So everything I've ever said in the past about Carson applies to Rancho de Taos. Back to the map for just a bit. So, <clears throat> point being, all the land that we're offering is right here as you come in off Sheep Herder Road, basically right in this region. This is Unit 1 of 1. It's a one-unit subdivision, which means it has roughly about, I don't, I'm going to ballpark it, let's say a thousand lots. Okay, it's got roughly about a thousand lots out here that equal this very small subdivision. Now, with all that said, let me direct your attention back to the listing page, guys, because I'm going to do a bunch of talking right now. Instead of staring at Google Maps, let's look at pretty pictures of the region. So first off, as we go through this, of course, this will give you an excellent sense of exactly how pretty, how picturesque this region is, if you are not already familiar with it. And this is just a road that we're looking at. We're just looking at a paved road, and it's pretty, it's pretty nice out here. Anyway, this is Sheep Herder. As you come in off the 64, as you enter the subdivision, this is what it looks like out here. It should be noted, guys, there's power out here at the entrance of the subdivision, and then it stops, okay? So 
As we go through these, you're going to see some developed home sites. What you will notice is conspicuously absent from these developed home sites is any sort of utilities. There are no power lines. There are no underground utilities out here. So if you're looking to build out here and develop out here, it should go without saying, but in case it needs to be said, you're going to have to rely on solar panels, solar power, alternative forms of energy, uh, because there are no city utilities out here throughout the region. Okay, number one. Number two, let's talk about some of these home sites. So this is a very popular region for the Earthship community. Uh, they actually, if you go to the map here, you can kind of see, and I just told you we weren't going to do this, Earthship Biotexture. This is one of the, um, and Earthship community up here. The Earthship community, my point, is has a major presence out here in this region. Uh, they love to develop this area out here with green, sustainable uh, eco-friendly home sites. This one is probably not one of them, all right, but I'm just pointing it out. Uh, there are some single-family residences out here like this, like this, like this. Obviously, some are in better shape than others, uh, but the point is the area can be developed like this, can be developed with mobile homes, modular homes with the aforementioned earth ships, so on and so forth. Most notably people, and this is what the real draws, what the real attraction is for a lot of people who buy land out here, is that it is what we like to call RV friendly. RV friendly is our way of saying you don't have to jump through a million hoops to go and camp an RV on the property. Taos County has very laid back zoning, maybe not in downtown Taos itself, but out here in the rural areas, there's, it's a very laissez-faire attitude. Okay, we'll leave it at that. It's a very laissez-faire attitude. And if you want to camp and if you want to RV out here, you can get a permit for 180 days, six months. You can go out here in beautiful Taos and you can live out of your RV or camper and whatnot. And uh, of course, this is hard to find anywhere uh, in New Mexico or other Southwest states. So it's a big draw for people, particularly snowbirds who like to come out here, like to you know, particularly during the during the summer months, you know, just spend the summer in northern New Mexico where the climate's cool and you've got, you know, access to the town over there and Santa Fe nearby, so on and so forth. A lot of people really like to take advantage of this. So point being 180 day permits. And by the way, what happens on day 181? Does the sheriff show up? Does anybody care if you go past that permit date? I doubt it. Whatever the case, that's the official rule, 180 days. You know, it should be noted, guys, I skipped past it, but as you can see from the the kind of roads that are out here, there's actually, there's one of the roads, there's actually, if you kind of go to the map and go to satellite view and zoom in on this, you can see there's actually a good number of developed home sites out here. I mean, it's not, you know, obviously it's not dense um, civilization out here, but there's certainly a lot of home sites. And with that, of course, means people live out here, they drive back and forth all the time. So you would think the roads would be pretty well navigated, pretty well trafficked, and... What page was I? I was on this one. There we go. You would think they'd be pretty well trafficked. Uh, my photographer reports it's not exactly the case. So you're going to want to take a larger truck or off-road capable vehicle out here, uh, particularly if you're scouting the property for the first time. Some roads look like this. Some are easy to drive on. This one's probably sheep herder at some point. Uh, others are a little rough. Uh, so just be prepared for that. Don't anticipate that you're going to be able to take your Prius out there. Okay. Anyway, uh, with all that said, let's talk about water table. So... <clears throat> Well, actually, let me get let me get to water table by talking about this. So this entire subdivision, however many lots it is, let's say a thousand, are all quarter acre properties. This is important to note because we get a lot of calls here about I want a one acre, I want a two acre, I want a five, I want a ten acre. That does not exist in this region. To buy a one acre property, and we actually have one of those in inventory, to buy one of those, you need to find four adjacent quarter acre lots. That's how you get larger acreage out here. And for too many reasons to list or mention, which I would only bore you with, it is next to impossible to find anything that large. It is the rural land equivalent of a unicorn, okay? So five acres is pretty well impossible. Forget about it. One acre is doable. You can find it occasionally, uh, but they are, they are rare. They are unique. They are exceptional. They do not come along every day. Now, I mention all this because it's important to note that a lot of people think you can't develop property in New Mexico or rather in rural parts of New Mexico that don't have city utilities, unless you have at least three quarters of an acre. This is something that we hear all the time. This is the conventional wisdom in rural New Mexico. That is not exactly true. It's a little true, but it's not exactly true. Here's what that's in reference to. There are various environmental laws in the state that say that if you're going to have a well, if you're going to have a septic system, they need to be yay far apart. Yay far apart on your own property, yay far apart from your neighbor's property. 
And that amount of distance shakes out to be about three quarters of an acre, 0.75. That's where that number always comes from. And what is uh, the important thing to note within this region is that this subdivision is in an area where the water table is pretty deep. It's what we like to call prohibitively expensive. So you don't find a lot of people who have actually drilled wells in this area. You will find one or two. And generally speaking, they've kind of made a little bit of a business out of it, a little bit of a community thing where they sell water to their neighbors. You can get a gallon of water for whatever, I don't know, a nickel, a dime, a quarter, something like that. Uh, but the point is there are people who do have wells out here, but it's not common. So if you're going to develop property out here, you should know that drilling a well is probably not feasible, number one. But it does have the added benefit of kind of subtracting that out of the, you know, can I build on this property equation, number one. Number two. Regards the septic system, when those rules were originally written, there were, you know, far fewer, far, well, let's just say far fewer green alternatives uh, than what exists today for waste disposal. Uh, the state actually makes a number of exceptions. Uh, if you don't want to have a conventional septic system out here, there are alternatives you can have. There are workarounds you can have. And a number of people who you see developing land in this region, I'm sure pretty much all of these lots developed in this region, are ones that are using those various workarounds. So the point is that you can develop land out here. There's just a little bit of extra sort of permitting, a little bit of extra hoop jumping that goes on when it comes to that. Okay, so just some things to be aware of. Uh, with all that said, guys, I think I've kind of exhausted all my knowledge of this area within this photo gallery, at least trying to get all this out quickly. So I will tell you, you can peruse the photos on your own time. Of course, we've got some drone photos down here that'll give you an even better sense of the region. A lot of these developed home sites, you can get to see some more here, as well as some of these just sort of picturesque surroundings that I was talking about before, and how this sort of government land will be yours from now till the end of time. You'll have these views uh, every morning that you wake up out here uh, for decades to come. Blah. Blah, blah. With all that said, guys, you know, normally with these properties, we like to offer financing on them. Uh, I've had so many problems with that in the past, and there's such a demand for these that we're really just offering a cash option on these right now. Whatever the case, the quarter acre lots are $900. Uh, I, I forget the exact price. Half acres are $1,800. Three quarter acres are $3,000. And one acre properties, if we ever have them, which is rare, will be roughly about $4,500. Point being, guys, if you want to purchase one of these properties, come up here, click the Buy Now button. It will take you to a secure checkout in which we will ask for some information here for the deed, legal name for deed, tax address, so on and so forth. Agree to the terms of service, click Next, and on the very next page, you can enter credit or debit card information to purchase the property outright. Uh, and within 24 hours, of course, we will have documentation in an email, a deed, some supplementals. Once you approve everything, we mail it off to the county to be recorded. County records, and then they forward it on to you. Voila, you are the new owner of the land. Uh, with all that said, everybody, very glad to finally be bringing you properties out here in the subdivision. We've been trying for some time to collect lots out here so we could debut a good handful at once. Uh, so I really like this. And as noted at the outset of the video, I intend to have more out here as time goes on. If you have any questions, shoot us an email. Well, if you have any questions, view the FAQ page because I promise the answer is there. If on the off chance it is not, however, shoot us an email, support at HemingwayLand.com or leave a comment here on the YouTube channel. We'll be glad to get back to you. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video.